Hello and welcome to LFC Focus. It is time for the roundup show where I will be going through Liverpool's latest result in a little bit more detail than the post-match reaction show. Obviously, today Liverpool drew with Arsenal, won all the at the Emirates in what really does feel like two points dropped after we threw away what could have been an incredible win away from home with Arsenal scoring that late. Pretty good goal, I think it's fair to say, but I will come on to whether or not I think Liverpool could have done better with that a, li with that a little bit later on to equalise and mean that we ended up with nothing but a point to take away from the Emirates. I'll be coming on to your guys' comments a bit later on, reacting to what you all thought about the game and your man of the match shouts and all that a bit later on in the video. But starting off with my player ratings, Alison Becker, the goalkeeper, I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10. I think there is definitely a case to say that he was at fault for that Lacazette equaliser. I think he's right to come out and try and sort of put off Lacazette because if he doesn't, then the Arsenal striker does have a pretty clean shot on goal so he makes the right call there but I think the fact that he stays out rather than going back and just trying to fill his goal a little bit better just puts him in a really difficult position and it means that Lacazette is just able to bend the ball around him and it makes the shot at the end of the day for a striker as good as Alexandre Lacazette a lot easier than it really should have been so I think he does make a mistake there but aside from that he makes some pretty good saves he comes out of his goal pretty well at times he never looks like he's sort of being put under pressure or anything like that whereas when you look at the Arsenal goalie Bern Leno they're really did seem like there were a few moments in that game where he looked a little bit shaky. He looked like he wasn't entirely sure of himself. So I think Alisson still had a pretty good performance. Not enough for me to give him an 8 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10 because of the mistake. But I don't think that undermines the fact that he still did pretty well. And if it wasn't for him, Liverpool could have very well ended up losing that game. So a 7 out of 10 for Alisson Becker. Trent Alexander-Arnold, I'm going to give a 7 out of 10. Mainly because I thought he recovered really well from what was a pretty difficult first 5 minutes. And that sounds silly because, you know, how bad can things go in five minutes, especially when you don't concede a goal or anything like that. But there were a couple of times where Aubameyang got in behind him and up against a player of that quality, he was in really, really good form as well. I think coming into this match, Aubameyang had something like five goals in three games and a couple of those at least were substitute appearances as well. So it could have been so easy for Trent Alexander-Arnold to wilt in that situation, to just kind of lose all confidence and worry that he was going to get run ragged. But I think after that first five minutes where he gets caught out a couple of times, he really came into his own. He became a lot more confident he didn't really give Aubameyang a sniff for the rest of the game until Aubameyang got subbed off. And I think part of the reason for that substitution was he was getting absolutely no joy up against Trent Alexander-Arnold. So I think Trent came back into the game after that difficult spell early on pretty well. Although I would have still liked to have seen a little bit more from him going forward. So he just gets a 7 out of 10. Virgil van Dijk, my man of the match to be honest. I said in the post-match reaction video, I spent a bit of time talking about his performance. I thought he was absolutely fantastic defensively and so so unlucky to come away without a clean sheet from that. He gets a 9 out of 10 for me. He would get a 10 out of 10 if it was a clean sheet, but at the end of the day, it's difficult to give 10 out of 10 to a defender who ends up conceding a goal. But I think apart from that, you know, it might not even be his fault. I haven't had that much time to watch any replays or anything like that. I had my head in my hands when Arsenal scored, so it was difficult to really take in any of the tactical small points around it or anything like that. But I thought apart from that, Virgil was excellent. As I said in the post-match reaction, he was always in the right place at the right time. He was strong in the tackle. He blocked. He made sure he got those last ditch, ditch, ditch tackles in as well. And whenever Arsenal looked like they were through on goal, like they might get a chance away, Virgil van Dijk was there and he swept up and he dealt with the danger. That is the Virgil van Dijk that we bought. That is the Virgil van Dijk who we know we can get from Liverpool. And it feels like over the last couple of games he's been good, but he hasn't been quite at the level we know we can get from him. So it was really good to see the absolute top form Virgil van Dijk return today. So 9 out of 10 for him and a man of the match award for his troubles as well. Joe Gomez gets an 8 out of 10. I also thought he was pretty impressive in defence throughout the game alongside Virgil van Dijk. He just got his head on every cross. He was imperious. He was always in the right place. He meant that Arsenal barely had a sniff in that penalty box all the way through the game. They had to really, really work for that equaliser and I think when we do talk about this is a disappointing result and obviously we do because of the fact that they got a late equaliser when we could have quite easily come away with the three points. I think we forget just how well Liverpool played defensively to deny Arsenal so many opportunities throughout that game. We've seen how good Arsenal are. We've seen how incredible they are going forward and how they can link up and how they can create space in the tightest, tightest of areas in that 18-yard box. And Liverpool just prevented them from doing so today. And I think for that, both of those centre-backs deserve the absolute maximum credit. Andrew Robertson gets a 7 out of 10. I thought it was just a pretty decent performance from him. Again, like Trent, could have done a little bit more going forward. But I thought he never looked too troubled defensively whenever Arsenal tried to get 
in from wide areas. They still managed it a couple of times, so that's why he and Trent don't get 8 out of 10s or 9 out of 10s or anything like that, but he was still reasonably solid. Fabinho gets a 7 out of 10 as well. I mentioned him a lot in my post-match reaction because I did see a lot of people slating him, but I think... If you aren't going to have your best possible game, if you are ever so slightly out of his out of your depth, and I think he was today, given that it was this was his first real big game for Liverpool, the first time he's come up against opposition that is as good as him, if not better, or even just ever so slightly worse. Uh, and I thought he did absolutely brilliantly, given the circumstances. He didn't shine. He wasn't the man of the match. He wasn't the Fabinho that we've seen over the last few games. But he did the basics so incredibly well. He made fouls when he needed to make fouls. He made fantastic tackles when he needed to do and at various times when Arsenal were trying to sort of build up momentum and hold on to the ball and use their possession wisely he came in and he made tackles and he stopped that so not a vintage for being no performance by any means but he certainly did what was asked for him to that from him today very very well Genie Van Alden however I think gets a 6 out of 10 I just felt like he wasn't as influ influential on this game as he has been in the past and certainly he has been this season for Liverpool and some of that is maybe due to the fact that he's played a little bit further forward. I think we know now that the number six is probably Gina Van Alden's best position, certainly his best position in this current Liverpool setup that we've got at the moment. If not that, then he plays really, really well in a double pivot for, with Fabinho. So you can maybe cut him a little bit of slack because he's playing in a position which he isn't quite as good at. But I still feel at times he could have stamped a little bit more authority on the game. He could have demanded the ball a little bit more and maybe tried to link up defence and attack a little bit better. So just a six out of ten for Gina Van Alden. James Milner gets a seven out of ten. Maybe Maybe just an 8 out of 10 for the goal because it was so fantastically taken under the circumstances. He times his run so very well. He reads how that counter-attack is going to work out brilliantly. And the shot under pressure with the ball flying at speed towards him is incredibly well composed. And, you know, if that had ended up being three points for Liverpool, then he probably gets an 8 or even a 9 out of 10 just because I'd be absolutely chuffed with that goal that he scores. But unfortunately, it's only a 7 out of 10. I still thought he was pretty good. He got about the midfield reasonably well, made some tackles, made some passes. Wasn't quite the there for him in terms of link up with the front three so that's also what prevents him from getting a higher score but still a solid 7 out of 10 performance from James Milner which is especially good given how recently he's only just come back into the side off the back of a little injury Mo Salah gets a 7 out of 10 as well I thought at times his decision making wasn't great I think there are moments where he cuts inside and he shoots and maybe you know last season he'd be justified in that because everything he touched turned to gold everything he touched turned to goals last season this season it's not quite the same and I think it would have been slightly better to see him pass in those situations. But he did hold the ball up reasonably well. He was in the right positions. He made some really, really good runs in behind that Arsenal defence. And he was probably our main attacking threat throughout the game today. So he gets a 7 out of 10. Roberto Firmino gets a 7, a 6 out of 10. It didn't really feel like it clicked for him today. I think he struggled being moved back into that number 9 role. I do wonder whether maybe we should just stick him in one position rather than moving him around. That might be messing with his head a little bit. But I thought he just didn't get on the ball as often as I would have liked. He wasn't always in the ideal position. Positions. And when he did have the ball, he wasn't really creating anything. His dribbling was a little bit off. He gave the ball away cheaply a few times. So not a vintage performance but from Firmino by any means, but nothing to worry about too much, I don't think. And then finally, Sadio Mane, probably a 7 out of 10. I thought at times, you know, like Sadio Mane always is, he would drift out of the game. At other times, he was at dead center of it. He obviously creates the goal with that run over, like behind the Arsenal defense. It's a great ball over the top as well to find him. And then a fantastic ball in that finds James Milner. So that was really, really good for him. And that probably gets him an extra point as well. But it would just be nice, I think, every now and then, see Sadio Mane be a bit more consistent in terms of how involved he is with the game. Jordan Shakiri just gets a 6 out of 10 simply because he didn't really have that much to do. I think if he'd been on for an extra 10 minutes or something like that, he probably would get a 7 out of 10 because when he did get the ball, I thought he was, he did what Jordan Shakiri always does and what makes us so excited about him at the moment. He is direct. He looks for the most attacking and creative pass proper prop, uh, that's possible at the time. And I think if he had been on a little bit earlier, Liverpool might have got that extra goal that would have won us the 3 points. So I'm a little bit disappointed we didn't see him. But obviously with the the quality of attacking players we have, it's always difficult to take one of them off, even if Fabinho wasn't having a great game. And then Joel Matip,
Tip doesn't get a rating because he was on for about 30 seconds or something like that. So taking a look at some of the comments that you guys have put underneath the post-match reaction video for this game and it does seem like there is a lot of frustration in there from you and rightly so. I think after the way that the game ended you're always going to be disappointed with a point and I'll come on to at the end of the video whether I think this is a good draw or a bad draw a bit later on but starting off Dolfo Merch, he says, why is Klopp such a pussy against the top six this season? The league is gone. Yeah, I will come on to the whole league thing a little bit at, later on. I think to say that Klopp was a little bit, let's say, weak in terms of how he set up the team is a little bit harsh today. I think you could have obviously gone with that 4-2-3-1 that's been working so well. But the issue with that formation is it is untried against the big teams. And while it has worked so well so far, it looks like it is the kind of formation that will only really work when we are dominating possession, when we can afford to put an extra attacker on the pitch and stuff like that. And I think, especially away from home, it would have been risky to play a front four with just two players in midfield. I think had this been at home against Arsenal or at home against Man U, which we obviously got coming up against next month and it'll be interesting to see how he set up for that game then I think I would have maybe liked to see the front four but I think all in all Jurgen Klopp set up pretty well for this game and I think the, the way that we defended, the way that we dealt with Arsenal's attack for most of the match vindicated the way that he set Liverpool up. And obviously we could have been gung-ho and we could have ended up with another sort of 4-3 or 3-1 mad victory that we've had against Arsenal in the past. But we also could have quite easily absolutely thrown it away because Arsenal are, let's not forget, a top quality team at the moment and they are playing fantastic football under Emery. So, you know, we could have gone with that attacking lineup, but I think Jurgen Klopp was right to exercise a little bit of caution today to make sure that our top priority was at first that we don't lose this match against what is a very, very good Arsenal side. Askel Munthe says, we should have won this game three in the post and a goal disallowed. The linesmen have to do better when that. And I think he's right there with regards to the offside decision earlier on in the game. I mean, who knows what would have happened and what would have happened if that had been given. I think that was certainly a strong indictment for why the Premier League needs VAR because that's not even a decision that would have taken a long time to clear up. It was incredible incredibly clear whatever camera angle that you looked at that that should have been a goal for Liverpool so it's incredibly disappointing that that decision went against us and hopefully the decisions even themselves out I mean they never really do seem to do so but hopefully this season is a little bit different because in the past as we all know Liverpool have tended to be on the wrong end of refereeing decisions far more than they have been on the right end of things and obviously we do hit the post a couple of times as well but I think Arsenal had a fair few chances to win that game as well I think it was just one of those matches where it was very very end to end and either team could have won it 3-0 but at the end of the day one all is probably the most fair result on the balance of things. Devin says this team has the worst midfield in the top six. Cater and Fabinho are flopping. I think that is incredibly harsh. I mean, you only have to look at the midfield of a team like Manchester United to know that we do definitely not have the worst midfield in the top six. Although, who's to say Man U are even a top six side anymore, given where they are in the Premier League table. But I think Cater especially harsh because he's been injured at the moment. And I think it's, it's one of them where we're going to have to wait until maybe about January time to really have a strong idea of where he's going to fit into this side and just how important a player he's going to be for Liverpool. It's probably the same with Fabinho as well and I think maybe if Henderson was available we probably don't play Fabinho in this game but it was just out of necessity we wanted to play a formation with three midfielders we only had three midfielders available who are good enough to play for the first team so Fabinho was in a very very difficult situation today and like I said earlier on in the video I thought he dealt with that spectacularly well so neither of them I'd say are a flop I don't think either of them have necessarily reached their full potential at Liverpool at the moment I think it will just take a little bit of time for us to find out whether or not they are going to be key players or just squad players in this Liverpool side. Uh, Boston 19801 says Trent is so bad. He just can't handle good teams with good players as always. I think again a little bit of a harsh comment. You only have to look at his performances against Neymar, uh, against Leroy Sane last season, against Ronaldo in the Champions League final to know that Trent can more than handle himself against the big boys. I think this season so far it has been a tough one for him. He doesn't really feel like he's got going. I don't know how much of that is potentially to do with the World Cup hangover and the fact that he did come back a little bit early from that and he's being involved in international duty a lot more than he has been in the past you know in the past Trent normally didn't play for England and when we had those sort of two-week breaks he'd have a little bit of a rest and a player of his age either 19 or 20 I think his birthday was fairly recently if so 
you know, you, he needs to have those rests. And with Nathaniel Klein not really being what Liverpool are looking for, he's not going to get too many opportunities to have those rests to recuperate and mean that he can play to the absolute best of his ability. So I totally sympathise with Trent, although I think defensively today, I thought he was fine. I don't think he had many problems apart from that first five minutes. But again, I really do feel like he does have a little bit more to offer going forward. And if he does get forward a little bit better, then we will start to see more out of players like Mohamed Salah and Roberto Firmino as well, because they will have that extra player to contribute to the attack. And then finally, Alex Torendi says, next time, Shakiri from the beginning, FFS. And I think that was a difficult call for Klopp to make simply because if you do play Shakiri from the beginning, do you play him in a midfield? Field three, where maybe you're going to have a little bit of problems defensively. Do you play him in a sort of three behind the striker where we play 4 2 3 1? Again, that's a little bit of risk because you maybe ask a bit too much from Fabinho and Vinaldum or Fabinho and Milner or Vinaldum and Milner, whoever it would have ended up being with the midfield two. So I think Klopp was right to maybe leave Shakiri out. But I think we certainly should have brought him on sooner because, you know, the front three wasn't entirely clicking. It certainly looked like they needed someone who would drop deep a little bit more and link up with the midfield. Shakiri is definitely that type of player. And like I said, when he came on, he was offering something that none of the players were offering earlier on in the game. So maybe not Shakiri from the beginning, but certainly with about 20, 25 minutes to go, it would have been fantastic to see Shakiri come as a substitute. And who knows, maybe that would have ended up winning us the game. But all things considered... Like I said, it's hard to tell at this stage if it's a good draw or a bad draw, a good point or a bad point. I think time will definitely tell with regards to that. When you look at Manchester City and at the moment, because we consider ourselves a title contender, everything we do is measured against what Manchester City do. And that's why today's draw was frustrating as well, because City did win at the Emirates earlier on in the season. So it feels in that regard like we have lost a little bit of ground on them there. But with respects to Manchester City, I think... They've got the Manchester derby next weekend. And if they draw or lose that, then we look back at this now and say, thank God we didn't lose because it's so vital that we got that extra point. If City beat Manchester United and just carry on blowing away everyone in front of them and just continue to be this juggernaut that we know they can be, then we will look upon this as two points dropped. But at the moment... I am frustrated, of course. I'm frustrated with the way we ended up not winning the game. But like I said, time will tell whether this was two points dropped for Liverpool or an absolutely vital point gained. Uh, uh, thank you very much for watching this video. If you did enjoy this video, then hit that like button. If you are new around here, then hit that subscribe button there. Check out some of the other videos that have been out on the channel over the past few days as well. Don't forget to follow at LFC Focus TV on Twitter. And I'll be back later on this week, probably tomorrow even, for the build-up content for the game against Red Star Belgrade. Until then, bye. Bye for now.